Renewable energy and non-renewable energy might seem like an easy topic, but you need to be able to know them inside out to be able to get full marks in an exam. So let's define this term renewable first of all. Now, renewable energy source um, defines an energy resource that won't run out as opposed to a non-renewable energy source that will run out. Sometimes you see it called a finite energy resource. Now, non-renewable we'll deal with first. Um, those are the traditional fossil fuels, uh, which are coal, oil and natural gas. Now, they eventually will run out um, within, you know, 10, 20, 30 century, years, a century. Um, but at the minute, we are using them uh, to basically provide ourselves with electricity. Now, how this works is you burn the fuel, um, you use it to heat water, which generates steam and then turns a turbine and a generator. Now, sometimes uh, questions could ask you, um, in, this is inside a power station, uh, about the different energy stores and energy transfers. So we should know, if you've watched my energy um, power video, that... Um, all fuel has chemical energy in it and when it's heated it um, has thermal energy and it's used to um, turn into steam which is kinetic energy and then provide electrical current transfer that to the national grid now there are benefits to this it's not all bad news we'll cover that in a second and um, the benefits to fossil fuels are that it's available um, technology we have it already and it's very reliable you know if you put coal in a power station it will produce a certain amount of energy there are obviously downsides, which we should know from uh, chemistry as well. Downsides, um, we don't say things like harmful gases. We don't say things like it's bad for the environment. You would not get marks for that. You need to be more specific. So we need to say about how carbon dioxide or CO2 um, is emitted when burnt. That then contributes or adds to global warming or climate change or you could say uh, adds to uh, the greenhouse gases that contribute towards global warming or climate change you also have acid rain B is produced as well um, which obviously uh, doesn't add to the greenhouse effect but does um, cause issues um, on the ground now um, carbon capture um, is a small way of trying to reduce that so you try and capture the carbon that comes out of our um, power stations Let's go back to renewable energy sources then, um, which won't run out, um, and they are made up of, there are seven of them, okay? So you don't need to know them inside out, um, but you do need to know the kind of pros and cons of each. So the seven are wind, wave, tidal, solar, hydroelectric, biofuel, um, and we don't include nuclear energy. We'll come on to that later. That's not a renewable energy source. Now, they all have a really big advantage, which is contrary to fossil fuels, uh, they don't emit CO2. So they don't contribute to climate change in the same way we mentioned for fossil fuels. So there's no impact on uh, or no contribution to global warming, which is obviously a really good thing. Now, um, we're going to talk about their reliability so um i've changed the order of these so the top three um are all their downsides they're unreliable so i've got wind and wave and solar the reason they're unreliable is because there's less or no energy available depending on the time of day or year so if it's not windy there's no wind there's also less waves and at night time or if the weather's bad there's no solar energy because it's less sunny which sounds like common sense but you get marks in an exam so make sure you learn it so unreliable um, they have another downside as well please don't say things like they're all expensive um, because they could be it depends how many of them you have but the idea is you need a lot of them a lot of wind turbines a lot of solar panels to have the equivalent of a power station we're talking about thousands of them here which is obviously a problem now please don't be confused tidal power um, is reliable tidal uh, tides do not depend on the weather or the time of uh, year um, there are two tides in and out per day um, so it's not dependent on the weather so uh, it's pretty reliable and um, there are other downsides to it but reliability is not one of them for tidal power okay the last two probably the trickiest to get here around what they are so hydroelectricity um, is when you build a dam to block a river or a body of water so let's say for example you've got a reservoir or a big lake with a river flowing from it um, you build a giant dam in the way of it um, to have this kind of big reservoir behind it now you can then control um, when the water goes through the gates so imagine the water goes through you're transferring gravitational potential energy to kinetic meaning you can use that energy to um, generate electricity so it's pretty immediate that's a, a good th thing about hydroelectric power stations uh, you get energy immediately it's also reliable ignore my spelling there uh, downsides are if you make a giant dam um, it's really bad, bad for damage to wildlife um, all around the ecosystem uh, you've got a massive body of water there that wasn't there before geothermal um, another one we're going to explain uh, clues in the name geo 
kind of to do with earth thermal to do with heat um, in certain parts of the world you use heat from radioactive rocks and kind of geological activity underground to heat water and use that to make steam and generate electricity so it's pretty reliable if you get one of these things set up the, the earth's always going to be hot um, and you can also uh, use the extra heat um, to heat um, use in central heating um, in villages um, or towns or whatever is close by so the downside would be uh, you don't find this in the UK you'd find it in places like Canada and Iceland and other parts of the world where there's quite a high amount of uh, geological activity um, and it also does damage cause damage to wildlife or habitats as well it's quite often in remote areas you need quite a big ge uh, geothermal power station uh, but not as big an issue as with hydroelectricity. Uh, biofuels is the last one um, so this is burning dead um, plants organisms um, whatever uh, to um, uh, to make electricity so it could be wood chips corn oil animal dung uh, methane uh, there's kind of a bunch of stuff that can be uh, classed as biofuel um, so the downside is you are burning something so it emits carbon dioxide uh, to the air but we do say it's carbon neutral because um, uh, yeah it's not it's not necessarily a carbon emitter overall but it does emit carbon dioxide and is it renewable well if it uses things like methane from cows, maybe not. So the jury's a little bit out on whether it's renewable or not. But generally we'd say probably yes. Uh, nuclear power, I said we'd come back to. Uh, nuclear power is not renewable um, because uh, the fuels which it uses, so uranium and plutonium, uh, you mine them underground. You have to actually get them out and they will run out one day. Nowhere near as soon as fossil fuels, um, but it does mean they're technically not renewable. The good part of nuclear power um, is that there's lots of energy per kilogram. One kilogram of uranium has about a million times as much energy as one kilogram of coal. So it's definitely worth pursuing for that reason. The downsides are, um, please don't talk about nuclear explosions things like that the downsides are it's expensive to decommission that means shut down and that's due to all the radioactive waste um, that's produced by it so decommission shut it down costs millions and millions of pounds because there's so much radioactive waste um, you have to be dealt with last thing to do with um renewable non renewable energy is how it's used in the national grid so energy used uh, let's say in a country like the uk varies over the course of the day generally it's going to be highest in the morning and the evening uh, the reason is because um, people are using electrical appliances like toasters um, and like uh, kettles and all sorts of things um, that they wouldn't use in the middle of the night or generally in the day when people are in their workplaces so that's renewable and non-renewable energy hope that was helpful